welcome to Big Brother Saturday Night. I'm Gretel Colleen. Tonight, too good to be true, the Johnny Rotten Backlash. Sarah Marie's eviction rescue, straight talk and Shana shoots from the hip, and a psychic revelation for Peter, who's next on his kiss list. Also on the show, Libby Gore will be in for a goss. We'll catch up on the last 24 hours in the house and review a hilarious all singing, all dancing week on Big Brother. A week is a long time in this most public house. Last Saturday, we showed you how much love there is for Johnny out in the community. This week, the fickle winds of public opinion shifted and turned decidedly chilly. Could our good guy Johnny, never been nominated, really be Johnny Rotten? The rot set in with this story in Brisbane's Courier Mail and quickly spread from there. So we did this story about Johnny Rotten in the paper on Thursday. He will be so nice to you when you're in the house and then he'll go into the diary room, he'll nominate you for eviction, he'll backstab you basically. And he'll come out and he'll be your friend again. There's been a lot of discussion in the web forums this week on Johnny Rotten. Here's one for example. Whoever Johnny gives his two points to gets nominated for eviction then gets consoled by Johnny and then gets evicted. It's rotten, really. Uh, he said it to Shana, he said it to Andy. Andy was very surprised, he was very friendly to her. The one person who is intriguing me the most at the moment is, is Johnny. He seems to be almost the Richard Hatch of the group. Johnny seems Rotten. very friendly to everybody, yet we on the outside know he's a little bit of a bitch. One point to Chrissy. Chrissy's playing all the boys off against each other, well, at least two of them. Um, and Christina, he did it to Christina too, and she's tweaked, which is a very good thing. So hopefully um, he won't be in there for very long. Love ya. Oh, sweetie, thank yeah. you. Look me in the eye and tell me he didn't vote for me last week. <laughs> Christina trusts her hunches, but what about the rest of the house? If only they had contact with the outside world. If only they could hear the radio. The guys from Triple M's Club Veg have taken Johnny's guilty hugs to heart and reacted with a song called the Big Brother parody song. Hmm. Well, the song's much more creative than the title, and we cut a little clip to go along with it. First there was 12 and Andy felt the knife go in and Johnny's been so sympathetic and he says, I love you. 11 left and Shauna spits the dummy. Here comes Johnny, slips his arm around her and he says, I love you. Who will be next? I'll make a bet. The kiss of death is standing there to comfort them and then he'll say, I love you. And in the end, 250 grand is in his hand. That was his plan. He is the man. And he loves you, loves you, loves you, loves you, loves you. I love you too. I love, I love, I love, I love you too. Watch out for Johnny's love. I know. Watch out for Johnny's love. I know. Joining me now is the victim of one of Johnny's hugs, Shana. How are you feeling? I'm feeling wonderful, thank you, Gretel. Thank you for joining us here tonight. Thanks for having me. Now, are you overwhelmed by this Johnny Rotten phenomenon? It's taken on, I think, a life of all its own. Isn't it amazing how there's one sentiment inside the house, where he's a much-loved guy, mm -hmm. and then outside the house, yeah. what have you noticed? Um, well, that's... The thing is, most people are saying to me, oh, every question I get is, don't you hate Johnny, don't you hate Johnny? And the sad thing is, in the house, he was really nice. Now, maybe he's fooled me, but he was still really nice to me, and that hug was really genuine. You think it was really genuine? What happened in the bed? Remember when you said to him, oh, you are so not gay? Um, I'm a bit embarrassed to admit, that's a little bit of a uh, happy birthday blur. Uh, you have no idea, so we'll make it up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, you know that Todd's been getting the hugs from Johnny. What do you think that means? He's on his way out, maybe. Do you reckon he's going to get the kiss of death? Mm, I hope not. No, I don't think he'll go. But you're not Todd's biggest fan, are you? No, I'm not Todd's biggest fan, but I don't think out of the three for tomorrow, I think Gordy's the one with the mark on his face. Have you just turned into the nicest pie person ever since no! you've left the house? Well, I'm getting fabulous response from everyone that speaks to me, so I think the real me is coming out. Oh, is it? How fabulous. Shana's coming out <laughs> here on the show tonight. More of Shana after the break. I'm going to give Todd one point because I kind of don't get on too well with Todd. Watch out for Johnny's love. I know. Watch out for Johnny's love. I know. Cover your ears, kids. Here's the latest Big D from the Big Brother house. The woman who spat the dummy, picked it up off the ground and bravely stuck it back in her mouth. Yep, it's Shana. 
Thank you for joining us, Shana. You're welcome. Now, you have had a whirlwind week, haven't you? I've non-stop. I've been radio, um, TV appearances. It's just been phenomenal. You walk down the street now and everyone recognises you? Are that... they giving you the finger or are they hugging no, you? No, not just hugging, screaming and running up. And I'm seriously, when they do it, I think... I have to, like, double-take to see, actually, do I know this person? Because the way they approach me is so familiar. And it's, but it's great. I mean, it's really fun. Everyone's being really nice. I haven't got any nasty feedback, which I was really, really scared about. As you noticed when I came out last week, I was thinking, oh, God, the world hates me. But it's been really, really positive feedback. I've been really happy. Now, what was it like? You went back to your home suburb yep. and you went to your local pub, yes, the Arcadia. Yes, Triple M organised this big um, Shana shout at the local pub. And I got dressed and they sent a car for me and all this la di da. A limo? Yes, or a Mazda. it was hilarious. No, no, it was a limo. It was yeah. It's really funny. And so then we got into the car, all dressed up, la la la. Off we go to the Arcadia. And like, I'm sitting in the car and there are cameras and there are, I can hear them going, Shana, Shana, inside. I'm thinking, this is my local pub that I just, you know, cruise onto, park across the road, run out and whatever baggy stuff I wear. And here I am in this limousine and everyone's screaming my name. It was just hilarious. It was so funny to see so many people know you and I didn't know hardly any of them. Do you like being famous? Well, it's, I'm enjoying it while it lasts. What do you think is going to happen? I have absolutely no idea. Or like, let's let's just imagine in a week's time there will be... What, Another one, and there'll be, be me. There'll be somebody else. Exactly. They'll take your place. Yes. Are you mentally prepared for oh, that? That's why I'm probably just making the most of this. It's really fun because I know I'll be yesterday's news tomorrow. Was this a life-changing experience to be in the Big Brother house? Oh, it was a huge life-changing experience. What, this is the sad thing. When we were all in the house and we are talking about what we were going to, you know, everyone's saying, well, what do you hope you get out of this? 80% in the house really think they're going to be, this is it, this is their launching pad, you know, they're going to get TV and blah, blah, blah. And I was, I must admit, I cringe when they used to speak about it because I would sit there and think, no one's watching. Um, and then now I've got out, obviously, you few, everyone's yeah, a watching. couple of people were, yeah. Um, but I still, in the house, thought, what I would like to do is maybe, I sort of fantasise that maybe there'd be like a company or something. they go, oh, wow, she'd be good for PR because her organisation skills and her cooking, none of that was shown. <laughs> All they saw me doing was drinking and being vile. So there blows the uh, idea that I thought I might sort of pump myself with something else. Might be a different sort of product that you're promoting. You never possibly, know. Possibly, possibly. So, and how have you changed? I think the best thing that happened probably was the dummy spit for me. It was the worst and the best because now I can go, hang on, I'm not going to just blow that off as, oh, that's just me. I now can go, wow, I really don't like that tiny little bit that I can see in me. And now I can do something about changing it. Having learnt this about yourself and therefore trying to change that mode of behaviour, how do you think that's going to affect your relationships? I'm hoping it's going to have a really positive outcome. That's, that's something that did flip through my mind at the time. I thought maybe that's why I'm still single at 35. <laughs> So we're seeing picket fences, we're seeing marriage, we're seeing two Maybe kids. Maybe not picket fences, I'm more of an inner city uh, apartment, St Kilda Road, that's, but, that's what I'm thinking. But perhaps that edge will oh, go. Oh yeah, with someone, not by myself. No, no. Have you had a lot of offers from boys? No. <laughs> Can you stick around, please? Because I have got a very good friend, Libby Gore, coming in for a bit of a goss later on. Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, in two evictions, we've lost two women, and this week, another one is up for the vote. Sarah Marie. Now, some people think the house will become a stinky pit of boy smells, footy kicking and testosterone. So Sarah Marie's supporters have taken to the streets to keep the genders balanced. Hi, we're Sarah Marie's sisters. I'm Carissa. And I'm Jolene. Poor Sam Marie's up for eviction again. And we think she should stay in the house because she's crazy, way out there, and makes us all laugh. And she's the only person from WA. Oh, don't go now, don't go now. Save Welcome to the All New 92.9, Zara, Troy and Bernie. We're on a special mission to save Sarah Marie, the only Perth housemate in the Big Brother household, and we need to save her because she adds a bit of spice to that. Oh, does she ever? We don't want boring old Todd in there for another week, uh, do we? Lose the hippie, save Sarah Marie. <laughs> now. Don't go now. Don't go now. Save Sarah Marie. 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 Come on in. Oh, 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 Come on in. Oh,
are the girls that uh, Sarah Marie manages from the dollhouse in North Perth. Hi, girls. Hi. Hi. She's so sweet and sensitive, you know. She has to listen to all of us and all of our problems, and that's like 25 girls. Lana, um, she's done the bum dance at the dollhouse and bent one of the poles, I believe. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, it's, it's what I heard. I think Sarah Marie should be saved because she's from WA and she's like the best. All the other guys are like really, really boring. I want to save Sarah Marie because she's the most fun, she's energetic, she'll give anything a go. She just acts herself. She doesn't care what anyone else, else would think of her. She says what she wants to say and doesn't hold back. I haven't been embarrassed by anything Sarah Marie's done on Big Brother show so far. And she does do those crazy things at home as well. We've seen it all before. We've seen it all before, yeah. Think if Sarah Marie's evicted, she'll still be the same Sarah Marie. She's not going to change, but she'll be off the planet. Come on, Australia, give her another chance! The bell will toll tomorrow, but will it toll for Sarah Marie? We'll be back after the break. But first, let's hear some fresh confessions from our imitation diary room chair here at Dreamworld Studios. I think um, Sarah Marie will get voted out because she annoys everyone. We reckon Christina should go. Yeah, Christina, definitely Christina. And who else? And Peter. They are so boring, they need to get a life. I think that Ben should go. I think that he's got a really bad haircut. I think he's a bit overweight and he can't really dance well. I think Peter should go. He's a bit of a show pony. He goes on a bit too much about sex and he thinks he's the group leader. Feeling a bit strange tonight? Kind of alone and empty? It's OK. You're just missing the housemates. Lisa, Johnny, Ben, Todd, Gordon, Gemma, Blair, Pete, Christina and Sarah Marie. What have they been getting up to in the past 24 hours? It's day two of the 40-hour famine. Gemma is weak from hunger, but she's learnt a thing or two about starvation. Tell you what, this 40-hour famine does make you appreciate how lucky we are. Mm, absolutely. Just to be able to eat whenever you want. Absolutely. When and you want it to never have to go hungry. No. And just that feeling I never expected of total weakness just like you see those little kids on the on the ads and they're always moving so slow mm. and they just sit there staring at the camera mm. and I thought it must be because they're depressed but it's not they've just got no no energy no energy are you feeling all right yeah I'm in the wars Benny this is one thing after another I don't know what's wrong with me it's I think just feel a little run down maybe from the stress yeah, and I think because I'm always so full on when I'm at home, mm. like busy, busy, busy all the time, I just don't have time to get sick. I don't have time to stop and think about it. Oh, Do a couple of... with you. Check this out. Look at my mouth. Just on a couple. Oh, oh, Look at my mouth. Look at that side oh. compared to... First of all, fill my glands. How swollen that. Can you feel yeah. it's just sticking right out? Yeah. Under there. Under there. And then look at the back... Oh, my God. It's gone right that's over the, the And that's the side that. that's... That's been playing up for the last couple of days. Oh, you're falling apart. <laughs> I just went... Like, yeah. I've had list around this morning. I've done the better Dean thing. And I've just gone... It's, it, it's so much... It, it hurts so much to talk. I just went and I went... I give up. I said, I'm in the <laughs> wars. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> the housemates are beginning to feel comfortable quizzing Peter and Christina about their relationship. I had the driest mouth overnight, though. What's that? I had the driest mouth. It started getting really thirsty. Driest mouth? Yeah. Uh -huh. Too much kissing, eh? Nah. Never enough of that. P-I-S-S. <laughs> <laughs> so how come no one's seen you have a big kiss yet? Don't you guys kiss at all? There's never been no kissing in this house. You've been hey? kissing under the blankets, Peter. Hmm? You've been kissing under the blankets. What? He's asking us why no one's ever seen us kiss. I just guess they haven't been. You can speak for yourself, don't you? <laughs> I'm busy. Your, two, your TV's new favourite couple. 
Oh, You're probably like more popular than the neighbours' couples. Because <laughs> it's real. They're not acting like they're a couple. You guys may or may not have something on and we don't know and no one knows. Don't and that's the tension that we can market for at least in the six weeks. Oh God, don't call us a couple. <laughs> We're scaring. <laughs> Uh, you doing flash? Sit doing down. 800 sit-ups. Are you? Yeah. Are you really doing sit-ups today? How many? Um, 360 so far. Oh, 800. I'll, I'll get some there. later. I'll get there, man. I'm doing sets of 80. 80. Like four sets. It's a lot of sit-ups, man. I know. <laughs> With no apparent improvement, Gemma's keen to discuss her illness. Look at my tooth. Bingo, thank you. One in the back. Yeah, you gotta look. This morning I went to look down the mouth and had to brush my teeth. Put your tongue down. Oh, look how swollen it is compared to the other one. Oh. Pull my glands. Yucky. Yeah, okay. Glands are all up. Oh, so hard. Todd has been transforming unused bricks from the barbecue into chess pieces. Other housemates are beginning to help. I should say what we've come up with. A whole chess set. Not a bad little idea, eh? It's an excellent idea. I think Mr. Todd came up with that one. Good boys. How good do they look? Queen. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh. Hey? You laughing? I'm oh, mental. I love them. This, a, this is the coolest chess set I've ever seen. 794, Four. 793, Three. 792, Four. going the wrong way now. One. 798, 799, and 800. Be, it's yeah. a good five hours before this the famine is due to, to end, mm. but Peter decides to begin cooking their meal and torment his housemates. Oh, Peter, that smells unbelievable. Oh. Oh. Perhaps Gordon's earlier probing about kissing has had an effect on the big brother couple. Yeah, something to eat. <laughs> oh, how romantic. Everybody except oh, the Mingo one. Except for me. Finally, food never tasted so good. Who could predict that they'd make it through their 40 hour famine? How do you have eaten? Not bad for a blonde, Jim. Who could predict how Big Brother will end? In the final week, which three will sit on the house couch? Everyone's got a hunch about the winner. Some fortune-telling fans claim to have seen it already. OK, two down, ten to go, and our third eviction is just 24 hours away. But just for the moment, let's turn our attention away from who's most likely to get the boot and concentrate on who can last the distance. Who's got what it takes to make it to the final three? Let's ask the viewers. I reckon Johnny. Johnny's got a good audience. I think lots of people like Johnny. Um, I think her name's Lisa with the really curly hair. She's really nice. She seems really nice. And um, Todd. Hello. Who do you think will make the final three? Oh, oh, oh I reckon me because I'm Todd. From... <laughs> Todd's escaped from the house. Johnny, Ben and Blair. Johnny, Ben and Blair as well. I think. Yeah, same. Same, Johnny, Ben and Blair. Johnny, Ben and Blair. No girls. What about the girl power? Lisa, Johnny and Ben, there you go, there's my answers. Can I just ask you something? Why mm -hmm. is your dog sitting on my foot? <laughs> Hello? Time to look to the stars with our astrologer, Roberta. Roberta, you've looked at all the star signs of all the housemates. That's right. Who's compatible with who? OK, Sammy, um, Sarah Marie and Gordon are very compatible. In fact, I could see a romance developing between those two. If they're both staying after this That's week. That's right. Even um, outside of the house, as things progress, I could see those two being very good friends and very possibly a romance. I think that Peter and Johnny <gasps> could have a relationship. Oh, scandalous! I 
words. I know, I know. Wait a minute, so what's going to happen with Christina? Oh! Well, oh. I, don't, I really don't feel that Christina and Peter's relationship is for real, actually. No, I really don't. They have nothing in common. What star sign do you think's got what it takes to get to the end and win the game? Right, I think Ben, because he is a double Virgo. And my other vote would be Blair. Um, he, I think, is... He's very imaginative and sweet and fun and pretty flexible as well. Um, and I also think that Lisa probably has mm. what it takes to stay there. Um, she happens to be a double Sag, sun and moon in Sagittarius. So, again, she's pretty carefree. She's genuinely um, carefree and friendly. Oh, I'll have a decaf double Sag with a skinny Virgo, thanks. My prediction is that after the break, Libby Gore will join Shana and I on the hottest gossip couch in town. Geez, I love that task. Now it's time to put our gumboots on and go for a stomp through the muddy swell of Big Brother gossip. Stepping up to the trough this week, Libby Gore and Shana. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Gretel. Now, three women, let's talk about the fact that three women may be evicted from the house. A total of three women in just three weeks. What's that about? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm sitting here, Shana, I have to say I'm just like overawed to meet you because I've been <coughs> watching the tapes. I've been watching, I've been there as you've, you know, leant towards that mirror and wanted to have a... Squeeze, that's it. Yes. Yeah, let's put it out there. What is going on with, with three? three? I mean, I it know. just seems a bit... Is it a problem with strong, outspoken women? I or think... were all three of you, are all three of you, or two so far, absolutely offensive? No, I think, I think it is the, what you said first. It's the strong women, we're obvious, we're loud, and we probably do irritate in a house that's that intense. But do you think it's the fact that you're women or is it the fact that you are just annoying? You know, like, you could be annoying and not have Not breasts. as a woman. Not no. as a woman. You can't be. You can't be annoying as a woman. And you see, this might be bits. why you're single, too. Could be. Because all... Oh, no, because Andy's married. All mm. right. I'm just thinking, would you modify your behaviour? If we look at that as a microcosm of society, that nice girls are popular, does it mean that we should all try and be quieter and nicer? You're talking about Gwyneth, aren't you? Sorry? The Gwyneth girl. What's her name? Ah, uh, Gemma. <laughs> She's Gwyneth to me. Oh, I mean, Gemma. quite frankly, she's so what? like Gwyneth Paltrow. Well, she's so gorgeous, so sweet, so nice. You just want to slap her. No, I don't want to slap her because I'm not into domestic violence. But thanks <laughs> for the suggestion. No, I'm interested because I love personality much more than how beautiful someone is. Make me laugh. Tell me a story. Tell me something I don't know. To me, that is mesmerising. I want to know that. I don't want to yeah. know that someone's neat at the kitchen table and that they tidy up after themselves. I just find it interesting that these girls, who are louder, to my mind more interesting, have been nominated yeah, to evict it. Well, I, we had a big discussion in the house about this and said that how long can you look at something that's attractive? If it doesn't do anything, it doesn't move, if it doesn't say anything, you can look at it for a while, then you want to move on to something that's actually going to entertain you. Yeah. So it's bizarre to me that the ones who did entertain, give myself a bit of a rap here, um, actually got kicked out. Love Sarah Marie. I think yeah. we should love launch her. the... Yep. Love her. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Save Sarah Marie, hilarious woman. Yep. Oh, and I love her bum and I yeah. love well, her Well, that's boots. why other girls are going to like her, because she's yes. chubby. I've got a theory, you see, that if a woman is nice and, you know, chubby and voluptuous, other girls don't dislike her. See, that's why I, I instinctively I was, I was dislike last. both of you because of your thighs. <laughs> and I instinctively like you. Because I'm Because fat. you're so happy. Thank you. <laughs> that's why don't I call I me healthy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a cruel blow that you've Don't judged us like that. Don't call me healthy. No, you do look healthy. Go no, on. That's why I thought I was going to survive, because I thought I'm older, I'm normal, I'm not Gemma's stick-thin body. I thought real people will go, yep, there's a real woman, she's going to stay. Well, i tell you someone else who I think is a real woman in the show. Christina. Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> Bit of a woman. Christina. That relationship with Peter. It reminds me of a very bad episode of Neighbours. <laughs> Does it? Yes, I think that she's needy. In fact, I'd like to see Peter booted out because I'd like to see how Christina can cope on her own. I she think that's going to happen. 
Do you? I reckon Peter will go before Christina will. Don't you think this is the Australian woman's revenge? The feeling I've got is that he started a relationship. Yep. Like anyone would do that after three days. I know, it's a what? bit bonkers. I know, why would you do it? <laughs> There's you're no with, escape. You're with this person and, you know, most blokes, they just stop ringing or they stop <laughs> dropping by or they just... What do you do? You're in the house and it's televised nationally. Don't you think, oh, you beauty, now you're going to have to be brave and do something about it. I think I've got a theory that you guys are... For are you forgetting at any stage that there are cameras there? You forget into... Well, I forgot the moment I walked in, as we saw from the book, but you don't... You, you always know they're there, but if you do it right, you just do what you do day to day. No, but I if you're think. talking emotionally... Oh, that's... Mm. Mm. I think you get comfortable with people, so you probably let down your guard because you are... Yeah, maybe you do forget the cameras are there or you just... You don't care anymore. So, Shana, tell me, who would you vote out this week? I won't be voting. Why? I think... Um, I know them too well and it's... I wouldn't like to go, oh, push someone out. But who do you think we could do without? Um... Probably Gordon. Why? I guess. Well, I read a funny article in the paper and it said, although his hair may be colourful, it can't disgu disguise his beige personality. Ooh. And I thought that was quite funny. So whether it's true, you know. No, I don't you know. wouldn't know, of no. course. No. And, and uh, what about you? What well, are you thinking? Well, of I was actually trying to toss up between Todd and Gordon. But are you telling me that Gordon doesn't annoy the house, he just bores them? Oh, ish, ish, ish. He annoys Gemma. Annoys the hell out of Gemma. And Todd does. But he annoy Todd, the house? no. Todd's annoying more people. Oh well, that's what Gordon. I want to see. I want to see a little bit, a few more sparks fly. So right. I'll be voting for Gordon out. So the and Todd leave stays Todd in. and Sarah Marie in. All right, save Sarah Marie. Save Sarah Marie. <laughs> thank you for joining us here tonight, Libby Gore, Shana. Thank you very much. When we return, you will laugh, you'll cry, you'll hurl. It's the highlights of the Big Brother week. A week in the house is 168 hours, 10,080 minutes, 604,800 seconds. But it only takes a few seconds to let something slip for a stolen glance or a flash of character that tells us all. Let's see the week in review. Shana, it's time to go. The week started with Shana's eviction. Wait up, boys. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Bye. 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 Cheers, guys. Cheers. To the remaining oh, ten. Cheers. Thank cheers. you. Oh, cheers. excellent. Well done, See? Guys. Told you it'd all be all right. But how good, in a way, must you guys feel knowing that the audience just loves your chops? Not at well, all. No, because they hated Shana, so, you yeah. know. The nomination experience has shaken Christina and woken her up. I was so sure I was all gone. Did you? Yeah, that's no. why. Got... You shined through last week. Do you want to come with me? I'm happy that the two of them are still here. Thank you, Johnny. That's all right. Love you. Johnny's been really sweet and all that, but look me in the eye and tell me he didn't vote for me last week. <laughs> Big Brother has delivered the props for this week's task, a dance marathon. Oh, a smoke machine, isn't it? No, 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 it's not. Each housemate is given a designated song, which is played into the house randomly at any time between nine in the morning and two the following morning. When the song plays, the housemates have 45 seconds to get to the gazebo with a partner and start dancing maintaining body contact at all times. It's nomination time. Gordon. 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 I find Gordon to be quite negative. Todd. Todd. He knows how I said he smells. <laughs> Sarah Marie. Sarah Marie. Sarah. The only reason that I'd vote Sarah Marie just because sometimes she can be a bit loud in the bedroom. Oh, I'm not looking forward to tonight. I'm not looking forward to this nomination. For some reason, I'm excited about it tonight. There are three nominations. Gordon. Todd. Sarah Marie. Oh, just one God. moment. Yeah. Slam it. 
Well, well, well. Another week in paradise. Sarah Marie takes a moment to reflect. If anyone else, but everyone else would appreciate it with us. I can't help it if I'm too outrageous for this place. It's all right, but us three aren't followers. That's why. Yeah. That's why. And I'm not. I'm a very domineering girl, and those girls are very don't want to say nothing wrong. It's cool. And she and Gordon deal with the blow in their own special way. Todd, on the other hand, becomes more introspective. I think because every week I've expected to uh, to be nominated, um, as I said to the other guys, you know, I'm surprised it took this long. Um, not because I feel like I'm rubbing any anybody the wrong way or anything like that. Um, the penny's got to drop somehow, someday, and uh, you know, no hard feelings or anything like that. But I'm wondering if I'm in denial about my whole um, sedate. <laughs> attitude towards it all. So Gemma. Gem. Everyone must find a partner for their individual song, but Gordon ensures Gemma always finds him. Sort of kinky, you running out in your clothes and just suggesting. <laughs> With no rest for the wicked, Big Brother begins to show his sense of humour. Big Brother laughing. <laughs> oh, it's so tempting. The housemates asked Big Brother if they could take part in the World Vision 40 hour famine. The answer was yes. Gemma even found a way to combine famine with fashion. She decided her charity T-shirt would look better sleeveless, collarless, cut off at the midriff, and worn off the shoulder. Linger around a bit longer, you know. Yeah, very nice. Gemma, you're brilliant. This week's task caused constant interruptions and sleep deprivation which had strange effects on the housemates, particularly Todd, who came up with this weird idea. Who's getting married? Yeah, but we oh, can... I'm going to marry the, the, you know... But we can do a lovers. face mask. Oh, yeah? Why not? Something different. Huh? Well, I haven't spoken to them about that, though. I'm gonna... Just spring it on them. Um, Do they agree to it? They no, don't, no, no, they don't, they don't want... Peter's, that's why I said to you, mm. Peter doesn't want nothing like that done. I want to perform a wedding for you guys. What? <laughs> No, yeah. Todd, no. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. No, that's why. I was going to do it just off the cuff, but then Johnny goes, oh, you might want to speak to him about that. Yeah, thanks for telling <laughs> me. Nah. Come on, why not? Best way to frighten a guy. This is Big Brother. Hey, hey. Big Brother. G'day. The time has come to announce the results of this week's task. As you know, you bet 75% of your weekly budget on it. Forgot about that. If you pass, your next week's budget will be $429. Yay. If you fail, next week's budget will be $61. <laughs> you passed. A funky week on the dance floor, but will Johnny really ever find peace again? After the break, time to find out what the shrinks think when Dr. Bob takes the couch. Welcome back to Big Brother. Joining me now, the man who reads the contestants like a book, then gives us the inside story on them, Dr. Bob Montgomery. 
Head of Psychology at Bond University. Welcome. Gretel. Now tell me, Shana has told us this evening that being inside the Big Brother house will be a life-changing experience for her. What are your thoughts on that? Unlikely. Why? To really change someone's life, to change their whole personality, you either need a very traumatic experience in a short space of time, or a medium traumatic experience with a bit more time up your sleeve. So what's an example of a life-changing experience? Near death? Near death or sufficiently traumatic, sufficiently emotionally shaking to get you rethinking, well, I thought I had the answers. Hey, after that, I'm not so sure my answers were really complete or were really accurate. Well, someone we're also having questions about where we thought we had the answers, but now we're not sure. Johnny, now he's yes. been the subject of tonight's show. What is the story there? Is, is he deceptive? He's deceptive. And uh, the question that leaps to mind is, is he a pathological liar? Well, the answer is, he's no more a pathological liar than you and I. If I'm a bit less than truthful, well, it's because the circumstance. I was being polite, I was being nice. And that's the kind of lying everybody does. Uh, it's, it's social lubricant. Rather than offend you, upset you, I'll bite my tongue a bit. But what's interesting, what's really interesting, is they're all doing it because we all do it. It's obvious in Johnny's case. Uh, he goes into the confession booth, he has his little vote, has his say. There's a clear difference between the way he presents himself to the people in the house and the way he presents himself outside the house. It's a, it's a clear discrepancy. But you'll notice when he was in there with Christina, gee, I'm really pleased Christina's here, love you, Christina. Christina's saying, oh, he's being really nice. Johnny departs and then Christina shows a very different side. Hey, this guy voted me out. But she wasn't saying it when he's there. Now, we all fib like that. And is that what the house needs at this moment in time? For someone to crack? Or, or is it possible for it to just mellow along like this with people telling two stories? I'm not so sure it's mellowing along all that much. Like, Christina's already seen through Johnny. I suspect some others will. I wondered if... Johnny was wearing being gay as a little protective shield. I mean, it's politically correct nowadays. You're not allowed to say nasty things about gays or women or all sorts of groups. So, look, I'm gay, guys, so I'm off limits. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. From day one, I'll let you know I'm gay. So you can't really pick on me, or otherwise you're showing you, well, you're a bit behind the times. And I thought that was, well, manipulative. I think what we will see more of is some quite deliberate strategic play. People putting up one front to one group, to one person, then putting up a quite a different front to someone else in the house, game playing. This is the 21st century, first new spectator sport. Set of rules, big prize, only one winner, and we're watching it, and people get really, watch the, the Save Sarah Marie. This is spectator sport. Instead of subscribing to my home football team, I'm going to subscribe to my home housemate and get really enthusiastic, paint my face in her colours or his colours, wave flags. That's exactly the same sort of enthusiasm and you'll get the same sort of strategic manoeuvres going on amongst the players. And that's fibbing. <laughs> Who would you think we will um, be evicting this week? I would guess Sarah Marie even though, of course, I'd vote differently. But I'd guess Sarah Marie, and I think the House will regret that because I think she's got a lot to offer a, a bunch of people who are cooped up and going to have to grate on each other's nerves and get increasingly mistrustful and cutthroat. But I think the people who are voting out there are predominantly young women. That's why you're losing women and not, not the nice, spunky young men. Thank you very much for joining Welcome. us, Dr Bob Montgomery. Thank you. Time to look back at the people who've been watching us this week in the media. Who Weekly devoted its cover and a seven-page spread to reveal the lives of our contestants before they entered the house. Woman's Day got the scoop on Andy and her husband's night of passion after her eviction. And we thought they'd have a cup of tea and a lie down. Insult of the Week goes to a talkback radio caller who said he thought the housemates had the morals of alley cats and dogs on heat obviously been conducting his own animal investigations there, and a bizarre event from overseas. A Big Brother house in Norway was stormed by 30 drunken students. 10 actually made it inside, 
Two have been arrested and the others will be identified from the show's extensive videotapes. Online at bigbrother.com.au, our live streaming has broken Australian records. It's the longest streaming event ever held in Australia and serves an average of 350,000 streams per day. Not since man landed on the moon or the marriage of Scott and Charlene has a television event brought so many people together and given them an excuse to party. Tonight, there's a party for Sarah Marie at the Dollhouse in Perth and a Blair lookalike competition at Melbourne's Crown Casino. Also at Billy's Beach House Hotel in Surfers Paradise, there's a wild eviction party every Sunday night. Big Brother fans are hosting their own parties all across the nation. To find out about them or to publicise your own, check out our website, www.bigbrother.com.au. Each week, the evicted housemate has to bring us some booty to auction for charity. Shana gave up her signed nightshirt last Sunday and it reeled in over $700 for her nominated charity, Cystic Fibrosis Australia. Right, it's less than 24 hours till the next person is evicted. Put your finger where your mouth is and dial. Judging by the polls, it's going to be incredibly close. Ooh, it could come down to a handful of votes. Your vote will make a difference. For Gordon to go, phone 1902 555 To take out Todd, call 1902 Or to see Sarah Marie's final bum dance, call 1902 Remember, if you feel strongly about someone, whether you love or hate them, the last thing you should do is evict them from the house. The eviction is more than getting rid of a housemate because you don't like the colour of their hair. This is your chance to make this TV show become what you want it to be. What kind of big brother do you want to watch next week? Who would be interesting to leave in? Who can we afford to lose? This eviction is critical. It's a turning point in the whole shape of the house. As 10 become 9, there's one place to be. Watching Big Brother Live from 7.30 tomorrow night. See you then. G'day, betters here. Catch more news and gossip from the Big Brother house with regular updates on Triple M or read about it in the Sunday Herald Sun. Big Brother.